the damage. Chandler not seeming uh, completely having it all together today. Little lackadaisical. He's looking at his corner, smiling, and that is not the chameleon-like Chandler that we know. He's a pixie at times, and other times very cool and distant and very businesslike. But he's being smothered by Muniz. Muniz now stepping back, and that's the worst thing you could do because you're still within range of those long arms and a good position champion. And Chandler once more complaining of a butt. Chandler in blue, Muniz in white. Halfway point now, the third round. Really headhunting is Chandler. And he gets caught with a left hook. So who will it be getting there first with the most? How the punch is thrown and where it lands. Eason White continues his busy-like movement just circling the Bantamweight champion. Drawn a lot of punches, majority of which have landed, missing uh, occasionally. Now look at uh, Chandler stalking Muniz, flicking the left jab. But Muniz then steps inside and throws it away. But he catches left hooks coming in. There he got a left uppercut by Chandler. In Chandler's corner, Muniz pens him against the ropes. 30 seconds. Round three. Ray Hazard in charge. Beautifully breaking them from that clinch. Muniz up on his toes. Really never set to throw heavy bombs. Really up on his tiptoes. That is Jeff Chandler coming out to meet Oscar Muniz. We're in the fourth round, a scheduled non-title 10-round super bantam weight bout here in Atlantic City. The blood continues to flow from the cut in the left eyebrow of Muniz in the white trunks. Fred Marino having trouble stopping it between rounds, as he did uh, after the second round when Muniz sustained the cut. Head hunting both of them now, and it appeared to me that Chandler won that third round. Picking up some confidence because of the damage to the left side of Oscar's face. Bleeding profusely now is the cut on the left side. While Chandler was protecting the right side of his face, sneaking in a right was Muniz, another one. Chandler should not be doing that. With his movement, he should be getting out of the corner. Beautiful right hand by Muniz and a good left hook by Chandler. This is a give and take non-title bout. Muniz, big opportunity. For Chandler, it's his second time fighting in the super weight, weight classification. He's at 121 and three quarters, as is Muniz. We've reached the halfway point of the fourth round. Still bleeding, and there's that holding that right hand and waving it. Do you see some blood on the left shoulder of Chandler? It's the blood of Muniz. Unmarked is Chandler, but he has felt some heavy punches this afternoon. We're at the Sands in Atlantic City. Get off first, Jack. Get off first. Judges are Fred Brunette, Bill Newman, Tom Kosnarek, and the referee who does not score the bout. Round by round scoring, five point must in case of a tie. You see the scar on the back of Chandler. Well, that came from an unscheduled adversary in a street fight a few years ago. It's an awful looking thing. But now he's trying to dish out more jamming, going to the right side of the face. A good shot. Good right hand, but some spinning on the part of Chandler. And Muniz comes right back. You will not intimidate Muniz from Los Angeles. 41 pro fights, only three losses. And he has fought some good ones, Muniz. Fought and beaten Eddie Logan twice. He beat Kiko Van Hines. 
terrible beating in 1980. Freddie Jackson was a, another opponent that he bested. The New Jersey uh, State Athletic Commission physician, Dr. Frank Doggett, took a look at that cut, which with closer inspection between rounds, it's on the eyelid, not necessarily in the eyebrow, and that is a very dangerous spot. Advice given to Larry Hazard, the referee, as to the seriousness of the cut. Coming up to the halfway point of the scheduled non-title 10-rounder, the Bantamweight champion undefeated of the world in the blue trunks, cherry cloth trunks, unusual, Jeff Chandler, who is taunting his Los Angeles opponent. That left hook, part of it got through. Now Chandler is talking to Muniz. Should be talking with those eight-ounce gloves that they're wearing today. He's that moving target now. Chandler, a stationary one. Caught a right hand just then from the super bantamweight from Los Angeles. A right hand of his own now by Chandler and the left. Those are stiff punches. But they're on the nose, the face, not on the temple or chin. That was on the nose. Had it been on the button, it might have put Muniz down. The button being the chin. We'd like to alert our stations along the line that at the end of this round, we'll take a station break. Chandler in blue had some trouble with the added weight as he uh, went in his last fight. Another non-title 10 round against Hector Cortez right here in Atlantic City. He felt that he didn't have the movement. He was a little sluggish, not as fast. And perhaps uh, the three and three quarter pounds that he has on today is making a difference. But now he's beginning to put together combinations. And Muniz is not responding, retaliating as often as he did in the first three rounds of this fight. We're in the fifth with about 40 seconds left. Good counter punching by Muniz as the blood continues to flow down the left side of his face. He's on the far side in the white trunks. Helping in Muniz's corner is Mondo Muniz, a cousin, serve an uncrowned welterweight champion of the world. And Muniz now is really doing an exemplary job against Chandler. We'll be back with more of this 10-round super bantamweight fight after this word from our local station. The fiery super bantamweight from Los Angeles in white comes out with a flurry and still blood flowing from the cut on the left eyelid of Muniz in white. Jeff Chandler, if you just joined us.